What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me for another video. If you haven't guessed it from the title of this video, today we're doing an oil change on the Rebel 500. So I'm going to show you how to get this done. So first and foremost, let's just start off with a couple basic items you're going to need to do your oil change. Obviously, you're going to need your oil. This is your choice. The Rebel 500 does use 10W30 from the factory. You can use the HN4 from Honda. You can use any other brand of your choice. Personally, I love Rotella T6. It's worked perfect in every other bike that I've owned, at least my Japanese bikes. I've used it in my Ninja 300. I've used it in my Z1000. It's really good stuff. I'm running 15W40. And the reason that I've chose to run 15W40 versus 10W30 is because I live in a warm climate here in Southern California. So our warm months are upon us and we're gonna have really extreme hot weather here very soon, especially in the inland area where I live at. It can get upwards of 100 degrees here in, in the next couple of months. The other thing you're gonna need obviously is a new oil filter. I am using the High Flow Filtro HF204RC. Now the RC stands for the fact that it comes with that nut on the top of it. This is essentially the same thing as buying the race filter from k &N. It's just made by this company. It's a few bucks cheaper than the k &N as well and you can find these on Amazon. I'll link it down in the description. You're also going to need some type of wrench. You can use an open-ended wrench, uh, a box wrench, whatever you want to use. I'm going to use a socket. Specifically, you're going to need a 12 millimeter for your drain bolt. And then obviously you're going to need something to put engine oil in the bike with and make sure it goes in cleanly so you're going to need your funnel and last but not least something to drain the oil into such as an oil drain pan like i have here preferably low profile that it fits underneath the bike and gives you plenty of space left to work with so just a quick tip before we go ahead and get started here something you're going to want to do before you change your oil in your bike is let the bike warm up for at least i would say 60 seconds if you've recently ridden the bike probably let it cool off for about 15 or 20 minutes you want the oil to be warm, but not so hot that it's going to burn you on its way out because your hand is going to be down there by the drain bolt and you don't want to get burned by the exhaust either. You're going to see that this bolt is fairly close to the exhaust, so you don't want to get burned. Safety first. The other thing, before you start draining the oil, go ahead and take your filler plug out. This will allow the oil to drain out of the engine a little bit faster. That way air can come in as oil comes out. All right, so here we are underneath the bike. I'm laying on the left hand side of the bike. The front wheel is up that way and the rear wheel is back towards the camera here. This piece right here, this bolt, that is your drain bolt. This is the one you're going to remove to get the engine oil out. So now that our bike is warmed up, we're ready to go. I'm going to take my 12 millimeter wrench here and we're going to go ahead and break the seal. There we go. So hopefully it doesn't take too much force to get this off. If it does take a lot of force, it's probably been over tightened, but it should come off fairly uh, easily. You might have a little bit of torque, a little bit of slip, but that's okay. As long as you don't strip the bolt, you're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and just spin this the rest of the way off. Now this is gonna have an aluminum washer on it as well. So make sure that as you're unscrewing this, you can feel the washer. I'm not sure if you guys can see it behind here, but you want that to come with the bolt. Make sure you keep a good grip on the bolt. You don't want to drop in your oil drain pan on accident. So there we go. Our engine oil is coming out. It actually looks fairly clean. It's a fairly light brown color still. It's not quite black. Now, I've only owned this bike for about 1,500, 1,600 miles now, I believe. The oil change was done uh, just before I bought the bike, I believe in April of this year, or it could have been March. I'm not 100% sure, but I wanted to go ahead and do this myself and get an engine oil in there that I know and I trust. So I'm going to go ahead and just change the oil early and the oil looks fairly good. So I'm pretty happy with that. So go ahead and just let this sit here and drain until it comes to like an occasional drip. However long that takes, just let it sit. You want as much of this old oil out of here as possible. So just let this sit for, you know, 20, 30 minutes, come out and check it. If it's down to just an occasional little drip, you can go ahead and replace your drain bolt. And just to go over this really quick, you can see the aluminum washer right here. You can reuse these at least once. And in order to do that, what I like to do is I take it off and I flip it around. So that way the crush point is now fresh. So we're using the fresh sided surface as our crush point to seal up against our drain pan. All right, so our oil came to a slow drip. I'm pretty happy with that. I went ahead and reinserted the drain bolt here, I'm just going to tighten it uh, finger tight for now. And then we're going to use a torque wrench to go ahead and snug it up. Now the torque setting for this is 22 foot pounds according to the manual. If you do not have a torque wrench, um, just go ahead and get it nice and snug and tight and maybe do about an eighth to a quarter turn. 
you can kind of feel when the crush washer seats don't go any harder than that don't go you know wild on this thing it's an aluminum uh, drain plug and i believe that's an aluminum pan so you do not want to strip this thing out or else you're going to have a nightmare ahead of you so let me go ahead and torque this up see just a little bit not much all right so we're good to go on our drain plug now we can move on to our oil filter. All right, so now here we are at the front end of the motor here. The front wheel is right here in front of us. The header pipes are right here. As you can see, this is just a little tip for you guys. I like to put some aluminum foil on my header pipes while I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil filter out. This way, if any oil gets onto our pipes, we don't have to worry about it burning off on there when we go to run the bike next or cleaning that up in general. Just put some aluminum foil over there and then that way you don't have to worry about it. it keeps the mess off your header pipes so as you can see right here we have our oil filter and this actually is a honda genuine filter so whoever had this bike before me took really good care of it and bought the oem stuff now i'm using that high flow filtro that i got, i showed you guys and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that whichever way you guys want to go with it i've had really good luck with those filters so i stick to them they're really inexpensive and i just like that little nut on the end of them that makes it easier to remove them. Speaking of that, I forgot to mention that another tool you're gonna to wanna to have is some sort of oil filter wrench to remove this with. Now I've got this normal clamping style one here that I use on my uh, car. And so that's gonna be perfect for me to remove this filter. You can also get these ones that fit right over the top and connect to a uh, socket wrench and you can you know, turn them off really easily. Or the reason, like I said, I buy those high flow filter ones is they have the nut already on the end of them. So that way all I have to do is grab a 17 millimeter wrench and just turn it off nice and easy. It also gives me a little bit better force if I wanna put you know, the proper torque spec on here because there's a torque spec for this, believe it or not. It's 19 foot pounds. Now I usually don't follow that, but if you wanted to, having that nut on the end helps a ton. All right, so enough talking. Let's go ahead and get this off of here. These can usually be a little bit of a pain to get off, but if somebody's done the oil change right before, it should be pretty easy. You actually should be able to do this by hand, theoretically, but sometimes they're a little bit tight. So having these oil filter wrenches helps a lot. So I'm gonna just gonna turn that till oil starts to come out. I'm gonna let this go ahead and slow down to a drip. That way, when I pull the oil filter off, it's not just this huge slosh of oil that comes shooting out from this oil filter here. All right, so now that that has stopped dripping, I'll go ahead and spin it the rest of the way off. And just be prepared that there's still going to be some oil in this filter. So whenever you take this off, there you go. And then I just dump it out and then I leave my filter generally just right there uh, to finish draining. So now just go ahead and let this finish draining till it comes to a complete stop. And then we can go ahead and put our new filter on. All right, so now that this has stopped draining, we're ready to go ahead and put on our new oil filter here. The HF204RC from High Flow Filtro. And there is that nut on the end of it right here. Before you put your oil filter on, you're going to want to take either some new or old oil, dab it on your finger, and just go ahead and rub it around on the rubber uh, gasket. This is going to prevent the oil filter from being hard to take off in your future oil changes. So make sure you don't skip this, or else this rubber can kind of like, you know, seize and get tacky up against the housing up there. This prevents that and makes it easy to put on and it also creates a better seal. Also, I went ahead and I wiped off the mating surface with a clean shop rag so that way there's nothing that gets in the way of the mating surface between this gasket and the housing. So at this point, you'll feel the rubber begin to mate with the housing up there and you just want you can do this hand tight. Just take it all the way down as tight as you can by hand. Get a nice good seal on there. Once you've got that about as tight as you can do by hand, it should be good to go. If you wanna go ahead and put a wrench on the end of this and tighten it to exactly 19 foot pounds, by all means, go ahead and do that. At this point though, it should be good, just hand tight. You don't need a whole lot of torque on this. You don't wanna crush that rubber and cause a leak. Don't forget to go ahead and just remove your aluminum foil at this point, we don't need it anymore. And we actually got that off of there without getting this wet at all. All right, so now that we have put our drain plug back in and we've done our oil filter, all of the old oils out of the bike at this point, we're ready to go ahead and fill up the bike with fresh engine oil. Like I said, I'm using this Rotella T6 here. I'm not here to argue about oil and this and that with everybody else, but bear in mind that the only reason that I'm using this oil is specifically because 
If you read the back here, if you look right here where it says JASO MA and MA2, what that essentially means is that this oil is safe for wet clutch motorcycles. So any wet clutch operation, this oil is not going to damage your clutches. You can't normally use any like regular engine oil for your motorcycle. You need to use motorcycle specific oils because the additional detergents in regular engine oil will damage your clutch. It'll make it slip and it won't operate properly. Now this diesel oil, like I said, it's JSO MA2 and MA certified. So that way it's safe for our wet clutch. That's the only reason that I opt to use this engine oil besides the fact that you can get uh, basically this gallon of it for $22 at Walmart. And it's fully synthetic. Trust me, there's tons of information about using this engine oil on the internet. Do your own research. Otherwise, do not just pick up any old engine oil. Make sure you're getting motorcycle specific oil or you're gonna damage your clutch plates. All right, so let's go ahead and get this bike filled up with fresh oil. Now right here, just behind our foot control bracket is the sight glass, which we're gonna have to pay attention to this because if you look closely, there are lines on the engine casing. There's a lower line and an upper line. Now your engine oil needs to be between these lines, preferably not below the lower line or above the upper line. Now I do like to keep mine towards that upper line. And when you first fill up the bike, you're gonna wanna put it towards that upper line because when the motor takes in oil and fills in the oil filter, it's gonna use a little bit of that. And we'll go over that in the next step. Something else to note, you guys should know this if you're you know, checking your oil on your motorcycle, your motorcycle is supposed to be in an upright position. It's not supposed to be over on the side stand. If your bike is on the side stand, you're actually not gonna see anything in this window. The bike has to be sitting upright. If you don't have a paddock stand to put your bike on while you're filling it up, go grab like your wife or a buddy or somebody, or you could try to sit on it yourself and pour the engine oil in and somehow try to keep an eye on this, but it needs to be in an upright position to know that your engine oil is at the proper level. So that's why I've gone ahead and put it on the paddock stand. So that way I can just pour in the engine oil and I can watch this window and know exactly where I need to stop. Something else to note really quick is that the manual actually says if you're changing the oil filter and the engine oil together, this bike should take approximately 2.9 quarts of oil. Now I've gone ahead and just put the camera here so you guys can see for yourself what it's gonna look like as engine oil reaches that point. I don't know how well the camera is picking it up, but I can see my engine oil level now. And we are heading towards that top line. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more to put it right at that top line before we start the bike up. So there we go, it's probably really hard to see, but I've got the engine oil right at the very top of that line right there. So at this point, we need to go ahead and put our filler plug back on, start the motorcycle up, let it warm up a little bit, maybe two, three minutes. Then we're gonna shut it off, let it sit for a minute or two, and then you're gonna check this level again while the bike is sitting upright and see if it's in between these two lines. All right, let's go ahead and get her fired up for the first time with her fresh oil. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reset my B trip meter as well because this is what I use to keep track of my oil changes. Trip A is for uh, you know my gas to keep track of how much mileage I'm getting. So we warmed the bike up. We've let it sit here in the upright position for about two to three minutes. We're gonna go ahead and check our oil level. And if you come in here and look very closely, you can see that it's at like the bottom line down there. Now, don't freak out. That's absolutely normal because what's happened is, is the oil pump has picked up that oil and it's filled it into that oil filter over there. So about, you know, you're gonna lose about, I don't know, maybe 100 milliliters or so into the oil filter. That, that could be overdoing it, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I could be off on that, but you're gonna lose a little bit of oil in your sight glass. Just go ahead and add the proper amount to get your oil level back to where you're comfortable with. So it just needs to be in between these two lines, like I've said, I like to keep mine towards the upper line. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this back to that upper line and then our oil change is completely done. All right guys, so there you have it. 
The oil change is complete on the Rebel 500. We're good to go. If this video has been useful to you, go ahead, hit that thumbs up button for me. Leave the like on the video. It really helps me out. It lets the algorithm know that I'm doing something that people enjoy and that they like and is useful. So if you found this useful or you like my content, leave a like on all the videos. I really appreciate it, guys. I appreciate all my new subscribers as well. I'm really, really, really happy with the way this channel is going and growing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please consider doing that for me. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.